Okay, well, I've got the weights taken off the track, and I um, set the green elevator back in place just to see how things would look, and uh, uh, I think I'm good to go for the next phase, which would be to uh, run some feeder wires down uh, from the bus, up from the bus to the track um, for the DCC, for a good DCC signal and uh, slip ties underneath here but uh, I've done that in another video blog so what I'll probably do is I'll do that on high speed so you'll kind of get an idea of what I'm doing but uh, not have to wait five billion minutes for um, me to do it uh, anyway uh, next on the agenda is I'm gonna start working on uh, the backdrop here I'm painting clouds on it and uh, the plan is to do this in three phases, this demonstration. The first phase, I want to uh, show how to do it uh, using um, sponges and uh, just regular acrylic paints. I'll, I'll be using acrylic paints uh, um, for the airbrush, but that, that's the first phase to show you how to do that. And uh, then next, I want to demonstrate how to do it using an airbrush and then finally I'll do a fast forward uh, um, video of me actually um, doing the clouds for this scene here so I mean right now I'm going to be working on this little uh, piece of uh, <coughs> of uh, masonite that I painted blue because um, uh, actually that's the original paint I used and <laughs> the tint has changed quite a bit so uh, I'm gonna have to repaint this whole backdrop anyway uh, with a, a probably slightly darker color blue because this I don't want to just put clouds in there because that's gotten dirty over the years so uh, it's gotten smudged up so I want to go ahead and start with a clean slate so uh, basically three segments first one painting with sponges the second one doing um, airbrushing clouds on my test piece just so I can get used to it because I've never tried it before so uh, this is something I'm trying for the first time and if that's successful um, repainting this I won't show you that but uh, putting um, airbrush clouds on the backdrop for the scenery so that's the plan I don't know if I'm gonna get it done all this weekend but uh, that's what's gonna be coming up in the next uh, set of videos okay I've uh, did some work uh, uh, using sponges to, to paint clouds um, a while back uh, when I was experimenting with it and uh, uh, the technique came out pretty good and uh, you can probably see the results of what I did um, about maybe four or five years ago on my uh, uh, website, my personal website. The, the, the links, uh, th there's links to my personal website on uh, my YouTube channel. So. Uh, you can go check it out there and uh, so I'm going to be doing the same thing again uh, the supplies that you're going to need are and uh, yeah, if you're wondering why I have this Elmer squeeze and caulk there is that I need to have something for the camera to focus in on so that's why that's there you're not going to use squeeze and caulk for uh, <clears throat> any of this stuff so just FYI because otherwise the camera with the focus will be drifting in and out be going and that would really make you sick and I probably made you sick there so um, sorry about that anyway uh, of course you're gonna need the colors some acrylic paints um, I got some uh, titanium white here and uh, a little bit of uh, burnt umber. I'm going to add a touch to that to the titanium white to make it slightly off-white because um, uh, I want to have some contrast there when I when I highlight the cloud to indicate sunlight hitting on them. So I want to have two, one off-white and one pure white just to uh, to give you that little nice little accent. And uh, got some black paint. I'm going to mix to make a light shade of gray. I got that and. Uh, I've also got some blue and red to make purple, which I'll add to the white to give, make a little, some clouds with a slight purplish tint. You know, some clouds do, when they start thicken up, <coughs> when the sun strikes them in a certain way, have a, <coughs> excuse me, purplish tint to them. Uh, also a little bit of water uh, for thinning down the paint. And styrofoam cups, these really come in handy for uh, mixing and dipping your sponges into and what I did was I just took uh, 
scissors, just a pair of scissors, and cut it down just like that. So you don't want them too tall because you want to be fail yourself, so you can dip your sponge in there. And some stirrers here. I couldn't find the craft stick, so I went with some skewers that I found. Let's see. Oh, yeah, and a sponge. And this is just a common sponge I got at the hardware store. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is cutting up that into chunks and using a chunk for different colors and using the rounded edges for certain things and using the um, sharp edges for other details. So you'll see, we'll see what I do. And uh, I have this palette for wiping off excess and maybe doing a little blending here. Actually, it's not a palette, it's a lid to a container. And, uh, uh, boy, I hope my wife is going to need this. Anyway, um, last, um, what comes in handy is go to the internet, find some pictures of some clouds and print them out. There's some cloud formations that are interesting, just to give you a general guideline <coughs> of what's going on. So there's, uh, tons of them out there. Just print them out so you can have them handy and, uh, you can use them as a <laughs> reference for the kinds of clouds that uh, you want to do. So those are the materials I need. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and cut up the sponge. Honestly, if you have a good pair of scissors, that's pretty straightforward. Cut it like that. Uh, and then take these pieces and just cut them in half like that. And these will be my brushes for Oops, all right, I'm cutting them off camera. I think I was mostly on camera, gosh. So these will be my paint brushes for making the clouds. All right, let's get, let's get going. I'll put a little titanium white in each one. Here, like that, a little squirt there. Some there, okay. One of these I'm going to take and add just a little touch. Let me pull a bit more because this is going to be needing quite a bit of it for the actual cloud cover. Okay, uh, I'm going to take just a little touch of burnt umber. And we're talking very little. Uh, probably just will fit on the back. Let me shake this up a little bit. Uh, fit on the back of this little stick here. Just a little drop. Just a tiny little drop, just to color the white. Give it slight, just a little off white. We don't want, we don't want to do too much. Okay. Uh, just a slight bit off-white. I might do a little bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Let me do another drop and I think we'll be good to go. Add another drop on that. Okay, yeah, we'll go to the burnt umber. Let me mix it up good. Okay. Just a little bit. All right. Now I've got some here that I want to leave a pure white. I'll be using that for highlight on the clouds to make it look like the uh, sun's hitting it. And let me add a little bit more titanium white. Uh, add some more on there. Because I want to add a little black to this to give my gray undercoat. Uh, just do, let's try just one. Uh, look at that, measure it out on the stick here. Oops, are we coming? There we go. Just a little dab. I don't want it too intensely gray. Just subtle enough. To indicate that cloud is a little bit uh, 
Oh yeah, I think this will be a good grey colour. 